GetRedCoach.com podcast series, episode number 79 with Mitchell Jackson. How to achieve your dreams professionally and personally. Don't say I wish, say I did. Welcome back to our Cataract Coach podcast. And today I have a very special guest, a friend for more than 20 years, a pioneering <laughs> ophthalmologist who's also an unbelievable professional DJ, and that is DJ MJ. Mitch Jackson, welcome to our podcast. What's up, Uday? Thanks so much for having me. I'm excited we finally get to do this. We've been trying to do this for like months. <laughs> yeah, sometimes scheduling can be tough. I mean, we both have crazy travel schedules as well. Yeah, yeah you got it. I know you just did a big trip uh, all over uh, wherever you went everywhere. I was at ESCRS and then I saw you were there for like three days and off he goes. <laughs> yeah, I went to ESCRS at a great time. But yeah, briefly, before that, I was in Australia, before that in Cartagena, Colombia. Oh, nice. Yeah, right, Coach, this year we're doing 21 countries, so it's it's really – Wow. Working. Yeah, That's it's crazy. a ton of travel. Now, yeah. tell me about – because the audience may not know. Everyone knows you as a well-known ophthalmologist. You're really <laughs> a pioneer in refractive surgery. I mean, you and I both started back on the day of mechanical microkeratomes, probably yeah. the late 90s. Yep. And 1995 we, was my first one. Yeah, can you imagine? Yeah, I was a few years after, maybe ninety. I was six. So. I think I was six years old. I was the youngest <laughs> refractive surgeon on the planet. <laughs> so, something <laughs> like that. Uh, but uh, you know, you also have a really incredible talent as a professional DJ, and I'm not talking like local DJ. You are a like legit professional touring DJ. Tell me about that. Well, so I started. Well, 15, 16 years ago, I was a foundation room member of the House of Blues in Chicago, and I asked the the manager there. He had a he had a hop and back in the day. You want to be a DJ there? It was like the spot. And right. I said, "Well, he come come in for an interview." So I came for an interview. I said, "What's your resume? Two sweet sixteens, and I'm an eye surgeon." <laughs> he goes, "Get the hell out of here! You're not DJing in my club." I go, "Let's want to make a deal with the devil." I go, "All right, what's up?" offer i go well if i generate more money in one night than you've ever had i want a one-year contract that wow. record still holds till today wow and i had a one-year contract how'd you, do it? how'd you do it i just figured it out taught myself i was a beast got ready and came in got lighting guys and did a whole like show and it was like packed and you know i did stuff for a year there you've probably been to a couple of them there and then yeah. Then I started fading. I did all, you know big shows at eye meetings and tape of COVID came. I'm like, I'm getting a little older now. And and then my buddy, who's on his way over, who's collaborating with me on my first original song with my vocalist live, which will be delivered live before it goes to all platforms at AO Saturday, October 19th in Chicago. Right. Um I mean, so, so you got a, you, a live track. I have a, my first original musical production song, and I have another one. I already I already wrote the lyrics for this one. You know, my story is my younger brother passed six years ago, and the last thing he said to me was, "Promise me you'll never say I wish, say I did," and that's why I was wearing the hashtag I did bracelets. And um, my song is called I Did, and I wrote the lyrics. It took me thirty six hours and seventeen tries, and I got the lyrics right. And I have a vocalist who's the daughter of one of my best friends. I stood up in his wedding. She was on The Voice and has done a lot of stuff in the past. But she waited. says, I'm not. She turned down Calvin Harris and a few other big people. Says, nope, DJ MJ gets me first. So she's my vocalist. So we're excited. We're, we're finishing the last two versions. It's going to take us about four to six hours to get it. Because you always have to have the way it works. I'm learning in musical production. And let's say I want Ariana Grande to do a song with me. You have to have 10 versions of the same song before she'll even fly in. Why? Because sometimes they don't feel it. The lyrics, they want a different way. You got to have 10 versions, you know, don't waste their time. And so, for you know, he said I should have at least three for for my, my vocals, Alexia. So we got two more to do. She loved the first one, but he says, ah, your night's October 19th. You're running out of time. You need to have two other versions before she flies in. You need to have at least backups. In case we're in the studio and recording, it's not working. You got to have a couple other options. It's so much work, but it's it's cool. And so uh, when I five years later, after my brother said that, the, the very last thing he says, 
get me that Vegas gig. So when you come to heaven to see me, we'll have great stories to share. And then he closed his eyes. Five years later, I opened for Zed and Cascade in Vegas. Wow. And, um, and they're the ones who encouraged me to produce my own music. Zed whispered in my ears, you're the greatest opener I've ever had. You're one of us, bro. Because I never had anybody introduce me like you did. It was like mayhem when I walked in. My management says, get up here. DJ MJ is a monster. And uh, he goes, start producing your own songs, bro. And we'll see you on tour. So a year later, I'm trying to do it. Don't wish, do it. I'm doing it. Hashtag I did. So my first songs I did, my second song is called Cuervo. It's uh, in Spanish. I'm doing a collaboration with one of my Hispanic DJs I love here in Chicago. We're going to do it together. He goes, you're, you're a legend, bro. You already wrote the lyrics? He goes, you're insane. So I'm just trying to keep this. Is gonna, this is my next wave in life. You know, I've done 30, between residency and practice, 36 years total in eyes. And, wow. uh, you know, I've had seven fellows. I've been involved in 75 clinical studies. God knows everything we've done together, you know, lots of stuff. And so I'm still going to keep going for, you know, another probably five years. <laughs> I don't know if I can keep going. I don't want to be operating at age 80, though. That's for sure. <laughs> I no, I hear be, you there. I mean, I'm going to hopefully move to outside Vegas and Nevada because my one son's there and I got good weather there and I got state income tax free there and I got my right. music there. A lot of reasons. I got golf there. I got a lot of reasons to be there. So that's probably where I'm going to end up in retirement and doing music and stuff and enjoying the rest of my life. Wow. That's awesome. You know, it's funny. I'm looking at a second home in, in the Vegas area too. Summer right. area. We might be neighbors. <laughs> Look at that. Well, I mean, it doesn't surprise me as the DJ stuff because you've always been super driven super motivated super hard working and then you've got the ability like all of them do we teach ourselves what you learned 30 years ago in residency is not at all what you're doing today you've yeah. taught yourself every step of the way right and my my collaborator is on his way over who's my kind of manager mentor he took me to the next level he says the difference between you and everybody else i teach they take three weeks to three months to learn what you learn in one day yeah it was insane how fast you learn stuff. It's like insane. He goes, I don't know. I guess the right side of the brain is still working. <laughs> well, I think that's that. That's that ophthalmologist in you. I think that, yeah. that's like a, the ophthalmologist is part of the thread of your fabric. You just can't. Well, we have to do things on the fly when you're right? DJing. Do you know how many things happen every night I'm DJing? I think I have it all under control. It went out on me, and I got sorry. I have one. I have one. I have one CDJ. I got two minutes to get something up and running. Wow. I don't know. They all just went out. I had to figure it out. Like, it's a, it's crazy. You got like 2,000 people in front of you. I'm like, they got their like sound engineers, like all trying to figure out, like, dude, you got to improvise, figure something out. Yeah. So it's kind of like eye surgery. We got to, you know, go on the fly. On the fly. So happens, you got to like know what to do and be ready to do it. So I guess that's our lives. <laughs> uh, it's 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 like it's like thirty years ago or twenty five years ago when the micro care tome gets stuck. Now what do you want to do? Yeah, you gotta know. You gotta know what to do. You know, if you don't see a flap, do not touch the micro care tome. Yeah. It's probably in there. Hold that baby. Hold that like it's your first born. <laughs> yeah, all the things we learn. Yeah, you learn to think on the fly. I didn't. I didn't realize obviously that the DJ work is that kind of organized chaos sometimes. It's organized chaos sometimes. And then, like, I went to see – I was I'm off today. I went to see my mentor. He DJed a really cool place Thursday nights. And I busted him. I go, ah, oh, somebody got distracted, huh? Little, little honey in the booth. You got a little distracted. All of a sudden, I go, did you just almost miss that transition? I got game. How he started laughing. He goes, MJ, only you would catch my shit. <laughs> I go, what? I got to get the teacher out. I got to call him out once in a while, you know? <laughs> well, I guess you're, as you build your expertise, you notice those little subtleties. Little me subtle the audience, I wouldn't even know. Right. You wouldn't even notice. Yep. Only like the DJs. There are a couple of DJs in the crowd. We're all laughing. Hey, we got them. <laughs> but um, yeah, so between my eye bit, I, you know, I have two full-time jobs now. It's insane. So right. Fridays I work on music and then I don't DJ every Saturday. This weekend's a little chaotic in the city. It's Mexican Independence Day, and it's like last year I DJed that weekend, and nobody can get into the city, so the clubs are empty. 
they block all the exits. It gets crazy oh. from all the caravans. So I didn't want to DJ this week and I'm going to relax. And, but uh, next weekend I'll be in Vegas for an eye meeting. And then, um, and then I'm going to see my Raiders play in their home opener. I forgot to say that's another reason being Vegas. I have a, I have a brick in the new stadium. I've been a fan since age four going to Oakland with my dad when I was a kid. So I've been a Raiders fan my whole life. I am Raider nation. So So you grew up in California. Yeah. So Cal LA area. I grew up in Sherman Oaks. You know that. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Your pop used to live here. I went to Pomona college. Remember I went to Pomona and out in Claremont and went to Harvard Westlake high school. What are you doing out of Chicago for the last 30 years? I tripped at my head on a rock I got disoriented and thought I still, I saw water. I thought I was still in Southern California. It was just Lake Michigan. Um, but got married three kids later. They're doing great. I got two or esports, professional esports players doing very well. And one of them, he's off to Worlds in um, Korea. Uh, he's the streamer for Team Liquid now. He doesn't, so he, he does well. My other son uh, won World Championship with his team in 2018 wow. in Smite. So they're set for life. My financial guys, they don't have to worry about those two guys. They're at least investing. They're probably better than I am. And then my youngest son is finishing his last year at Carthage in Southern Wisconsin. Beautiful campus. He might go pre-med. He might be my last hope. He, he could be your last fellow. He's my la- he could be my last fellow. <laughs> now tell me about your fellowship. How did you start your fellowship? It's been very popular. It's a great hands-on Anterior segment, refractive, cataract fellowship. Tell me about it. Yeah, so uh, Bill Wiley and Rob Weinstock were doing the private practice fellowships, and they went through SFO, the match, and they said like seven years ago, dude, you got to do this. It's really cool. You can get the help. You are you don't mind teaching people. You are you know have high energy. So I started with um, my first fellow about seven years ago, and it's been awesome, you know. The hard part is you train them, you get them perfect, right. and then they have to leave. <laughs> and then you got to start all over again. So this year, I had a lot of things the last six months. Not so good luck for me happened, other than my music stuff. I just It was very wearing, and so I decided to take a different approach. Um, I'm going to hire a PA and train them to be a perpetual fellow. And so we're about to hire a new PA and do the same thing. They'll just be do the same stuff as a fellow. They'll be able to run femtosecond laser, do LDD treatments for LAL patients. They'll be able to see post-ops. I'll just train them. She already has four years experience uh, in eyes as a PA. So that would be good because I don't have to like, she'll have some background already. Um, so that's my next thing. So it's kind of hard to let my last fellow go. I decided not to do the 20 interviews of this academy and, <laughs> Try and find a new one. It's just been a lot, a lot of wear and tear, and it's been awesome. So I'll just do a perpetual fellow now. Same thing. Keep the tradition going in a different way. Yeah, you're a natural teacher. It makes it kind of easy. You know, you're really yeah. good at that. Well, that's what you are. Same way, man. Anybody, yeah. who, everybody who works with Uday always <laughs> does well in in practice. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. actually, I gave up teaching residents about two years ago. I stopped the oh, professor. Nice. Yeah, so, so you, I, yeah. Wear and tear. It's a little wear and tear. Well, I loved it. It's just I, I'm done with the administrative nonsense and grief. Plus, as you said earlier, you got to change gears every so often. Every you decade or two, you got to change gears. The monotony of the same thing starts to grow on you. You know, you got to keep it. You got to keep it fresh. This will be a fresh thing now with the PA, something different, and and uh, it'll give me a little break too. Because once I got them trained, uh, you know, they can take call and do all the things right now that I've kind of lost with my fellow leaving. So it just gives me a little break to focus on some of the other things I like to do and still stay engaged. You know, I'll be at the big conferences and going to take a little more vacation time. I'm going to do the hashtag. I'm going to do the hashtag I did thing, which my brother taught me the most valuable lesson in life. Hashtag I did. So I got to start doing that because, you know, I'm not getting any younger. I might be DJ MJ. The other DJs in the city call me the legend. I go, maybe in my own mind. They go, dude, you are the legend. You're like twice our age, and now you're producing music. Dude, we're all being there on October 19th for you. You have no no idea. I'm dropping uh, $5,000 and $1 bills as my confetti. The club already bought the money nets. Wow. Like only DJ MJ comes up with crazy shit on his big night. So there's a lot of surprises. That's just one of them. I got two others. Tomorrow I'm doing the other one. It's going to be so cool, dude. It's a big night. 
I want to be, a, I want it to be a memory for a lifetime for all my I people, industry people, family, friends, Chicago DJs, industry, everybody kind of supported me. It'll be kind of a cool night to remember and honor my brother. That's fantastic. Well, I'm going to drop a link here. We're going to feature this podcast just a week or two before Academy. So okay. all of us who are listening to this podcast, and we have a huge reach. We'll, we'll leave a link with the details below, but tell us what's going to be the Friday of Academy. No, it's going to be Saturday night of Academy at Club Prism. Um, I'm the direct support. It's not confirmed, but I think they're about to sign Sophie Tucker as the main DJ that night. Cause they want me that you say, everybody keeps saying you're the headliner that night. I go, yeah, but I want to celebrate with people. I don't want to be like stuck all night working Right. So on the direct support. So it's late. So all you people got to be able to come late. It's like 1130 to 130 or 12 to two is direct support. That's so like sa Saturday, October 19th, October 19th. I'll uh, send you the flyer. It's about to get approved. I'll send it to you so you can have the, I'll email it to you. So you have the flyer with all the details. And we'll, we'll link it down here and then yeah uh, people just go on and buy tickets and there'll be a link to even get tables i know some people have already reached out or are trying to book tables already ahead of time i think the end of the next week you get uh tables will start getting booked it's a big night it's gonna be cray cray fun <laughs> it sounds like it sounds just amazing. don't book anything sunday morning sorry Ayo. it might be a little quiet in the halls on that day but <laughs> my advice don't start the sunday afternoon <laughs> Oh, so I'm gonna have to reschedule that Sunday morning eight o'clock uh, course, huh? You're not. You're you're gonna. You can do it. You're Uday. I know it. You you're able to do a lot of things that some people can't do. But yeah, so that's the scoop. I mean, just balancing everything. You know. Yeah, that's twenty five cases this week, and now I'm working on music all afternoon for the next five hours. It's like two full time job. You know, learning FL Studio is a software to create music. My mentor said, it is going to be like learning Japanese. And I said, holy shit, it is like learning Japanese. It's crazy. I mean, insanity. So um, it's like, you know, it's a whole nother, it's a whole nother thing to learn, but getting good at it. You know, I'm not as fast as some of these guys, but I got the right ideas. I got the lyrics, the ideas, the sounds, the tune, the tones and the music and the the, you know, my first song is a G minor song. You got to yeah, at least played instruments when I was younger. It helps. You know, I played uh, saxophone and uh, clarinet. I'm going to have a sax player do a few songs with me, too, at the, my big night. I have a lot of surprises. I want to tell you yeah. all. There's oh, more coming, even more than that. It's going to be a big night. Oh, it sounds amazing. I bet <laughs> your, your, your DJ colleagues can't believe that, like, your day job is doing eye surgery. Yeah, they say. They just say, dude, Air Leash, for example, was... DJing and I came and I followed him one night at a club. He goes, Oh, I got the legend tonight. What the hell? They're just nice. The guys were all, all the DJs in the city have been so supportive. You know, at first I was scared, like, who is this guy? Well, they see how hard I work and they know I put the time in like them and, and deliver. So they appreciate that. And then they still, then they can't believe how long do you do eye surgery all week? <laughs> and you're like, and you're twice our age. What the hell, man? That's insanity. You're like, I just tell them I'm DJ MJ. <laughs> they go, yes, you are. <laughs> so oh, that's, that's fantastic. Well, you're you're living your best life. That's the most important part. Yeah, my brother saved my life. I think by telling me that when he, he said yeah, that day. You can understand that. Yeah, it, it may. So it'll be an emotional night for me, but yeah. I will deliver. But I will deliver because it will be. Uh, yeah, it's kind of what I've been working towards. So. I, yes. I love it. I, I don't say I wish, say I did. Say I did. Yeah, promise me you'll never say I wish, say I did. Yeah, Netflix is interested in doing a documentary. I told them, uh, hash called hashtag I did. I said, not till after I have my first song produced. I go, that's a better ending. Right. Yeah, for sure. I thought last year opening for Zen and Cascade would be pretty damn good. I played in front of 5,000 people. <laughs> Zed. That's going to make you a bit nervous, no? Well, my one of my producer friends was there from Chicago, and uh, he told everybody to clear out of the booth. I never seen MJ like tighten up. And the guy told me the sound guy goes, "This is not like Chicago, New York, or or wherever else you've played. In Vegas, you'll have five thousand people in front of you at ten thirty, two songs in. So wow. what you got tonight, DJ MJ from Chicago? And I got kind of quiet." And then my producer says, look at your Instagram right now. I go, what do you mean look at my Instagram? 
look at your goddamn Instagram right now. I did 30 or 40 DJs from Chicago all message me hashtag I did right before I started. Oh, you gotta love that. And then I said to the guy next to me, he goes, and now you're fucked. Now you get DJ MJ. And then I went crazy. <laughs> That's all I needed. My producer was like, got MJ back, everybody. We're all so you, good. You were then just you were just in the zone mentally. Just yeah, like and then they just did that and just snapped me out of it. That's pretty cool, yeah. right? Isn't that That's freaking fantastic. cool? Yeah, it gave me goosebumps right now. I know. So and then I delivered. And it was like awesome. I surprised my mentor. He has a big song. I asked his vocalist to fly in and oh. surprised him. He jumped in the booth with me and we played his song live. So he goes, now it's your turn, MJ, on October 19th. You'll have your vocalist on your song. So. <laughs> wow. Well, I'm glad you have this outlet. You have this new passion. Because I know. It's cool. It, it's it's amazing. And don't don't get me wrong. I love my eye stuff. I love people giving people sight. I mean, I've just been, I've done everything. I, I mean, I could do more, I guess. I've done so much in the eyes. It's kind of like. You know how it is. It's kind of like <laughs> you kind of hit the end there. You keep doing it because you love right. it, but it's like, all right, done a lot of stuff already. There's not much more to do. <laughs> right. Well, we got to keep I mean, I'm global that. medical director for Ace Vision Group. I'm trying <clears> to get them <throat> to the finish line with the presbyopia treatment for the laser scleral treatment. I've been doing that for like 15 years. So we're almost close to the finish line. So that'll kind of be my like eye thing that I need to cross the finish line mm. with. Got it. And accomplished. I put a lot of time into that too. So that's kind of like my big thing on the eye side. Tell and me more about it. I, I am, of course, like uh, yeah. like you, presbyopic. So I, I want to know more. What is the what is the treatment? I don't know much about it. So it creates micro pores with an Urban MEI laser in the sclera. Uh, in the sclera, four quadrants. Uh, there's a lot of science behind it now, and, and it restores. The true dynamic range of focus is really the new terminology versus accommodation. Because accommodation is just one part of it. Uh, dynamic range of focus. So um, it, it, it's not like a pinhole effect like drops. It's not a lens implant, you know, that's replacing the lens. This is actually getting your own natural lens to rejuvenate and do its thing. And so it won't work if you have a cataract. This is like for the patients who are presbyopic without a cataract. And when they get a cataract, then you do a lens implant. And uh, maybe it'll help accommodating the lenses down the road. Who knows? We don't really know any of that data. But right now, it's it works. I mean... With our handheld device that touches the sclera, our second prototype, I've been doing it from the first prototype, um, restores patients. Most of them are J2. Wow. And they and they don't lose any distance vision, and it doesn't affect any calculations because it's you know outside the uh, ocular axis. It's in the sclera. It doesn't affect any uh, axial length or any measurements for future cataract surgery. Um, so... You know, it's safe, no anterior segment ischemia. You can do a retreatment. We're going to have an eczema laser platform. It'll be commercialized very soon. So it's like doing it under a laser. It'll all be tracked, and it's like it'll be like a 14-second treatment. You can, wow. As patients get older, you can kind of retreat them until they get a cataract. So, you know, the whole thing George wearing with dysfunctional lens syndrome, we're kind of making it functional again until you get a cataract. That's kind of neat. So kind of turning back the, the clock hand a little yeah. bit. Yeah, that's what we're basically doing, just restoring all the functions that are lost. And we're doing it right at the point of the mechanism where Did it's you, being impaired. You figured it gives you like the visual range of, let's say, a 40-year-old? Probably yeah. not a 20-year-old. Not a 20-year-old. Like a 40-year-old, yeah. Well, I, was, I, was, I was okay at 40. Yeah. Or even a 35 year old, you know, because some people at 40 still have to read. You know, we everybody who gets in the study at least has to be in a plus 150 full time reader. Mm -hmm. They have to be on them full time. And then most most patients are without readers unless you're like really tiny print. No different than like our current lens implants. Our data matches all the FDA approved data for any approved uh, 
um, premium lens for presbyopia now. So, so it's pretty nice. We did big studies in Taiwan, uh, Philippines, and, and uh, Panama, and they're all designed like FDA clinical trials. All right. We we learned that different cultures have different thickness of sclera, so our device will have an OCT built into it. So we make sure we get deep enough. So it'll be driven by that. It'll be awesome. How how big are the pores and how deep do you have to go? Uh, I forget now. I'm like forgetting now. I'm, I don't remember the exact micron size. I always forget. That everybody asks me. We have, to, we have to get eighty percent depth at least, gotcha. uh, where you see a little bit of the choroidal hue. And um, but they're uh, I don't I can't remember the micron size, but it's but tiny. Very, oh yeah, you you can't see them with the naked eye. Maybe the first day, and it's trans-cons. You don't do a conch I mean, You don't induce dry eye, none of that stuff. So it, it's tiny enough that you probably won't see them with a slit lamp after a, a week or so. Yeah, it won't be really visible. And the newer laser, will we can put spots to avoid certain blood vessels. So we try and minimize subconch heme. Oh, nice. So it's so a it's cool technology. A, it fits in nicely into the kind of timeline. So... You right. Know, for our patients now, everyone's becoming myopic from all the near work on their tablets and phones. Yeah. Yeah. So when they're like 20 years old, they get keratorefractive surgery, like LASIK. Yeah. Then when they're 45, they get something like this to treat presbyopia. Yeah. And then they're 65, they get an IOL. So they'll stay with you for at least three procedures now. Well, nice part is you can maintain fantastic vision throughout life. That's awesome. Yeah. Forever young. That's what I call my premium, you know, my premium IOL category oh tell me about that i love the name yeah we we do lifestyle so now we used to have like a legal to drive one that i think jim lono never came up with that terminology we just now do basic or forever young and so basic is just you know what insurance pays for monofocal we don't promise anything we promise them full-time glasses but they'll right. see better sure and they all complain like, all right, I got all pair of glasses. Oh uh, yeah, full time glasses. That's what you signed up for. I go, you see better though, uh, or forever young, which is why we call it because that's it just you know people would rather. I tell them, would you rather be forever old or young? I'm just saying. So mm -hmm. they they like that. They buy into that. So that's our forever young option where we tell them they're going to be legal to drive you know they're going to be at least j3 i show them like that's what the lenses are mostly that's their endpoint for approval if, and i said you know if you get better like some people get j2 and they complain i'm like well you got one line better we should be charging you more money what are you complaining about you got one line better than the lens can perform i mean really right um, well, whenever, yeah whenever patients complain too much i always say listen we have one option left they said what's that i said i can go and put the cataract right back yeah, or I'll tell them I'll just take the lens out, and then we'll put one of the other lenses in and put you back in glasses full time. Whatever you want, <laughs> but I can't refund you unless I take the lens out. You won't get to keep the lens and uh, and and get refunded. Hell no. Yeah. <laughs> but see, these patients don't know. The more they complain, especially the high maintenance ones, that means you're going to do more DJ work and less ophthalmology. I know that. That's it's moving that route. <laughs> well, I just you know I'm getting, you know I'm I'm forever young in my mind, <laughs> but I'm not forever young <laughs> chronologically. Unfortunately, I do try and work out five days a week and stay fit and keep everything going. And it's just you know it's still uh, still got a it's, it's still aging. I call it the AGE syndrome. <laughs> it's a AGE, damn syndrome. Yeah. I I hate that syndrome. I tell my patients, I know, isn't that a terrible syndrome? Instead of telling them I'm getting older, I go, that damn AGE syndrome. I have it too. I'm sorry you have it, but I guess we all do eventually. Right. So I, we have a solution for that uh, with our one of our lens implants. Maybe we'll slow it down for you a little bit. So, <laughs> well, that's yeah, that's the thing. That's why I love I love the the you know saying from your brother. Don't don't say I wish, say I did. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's so I tell important. I told a patient that I go, do you really want to you said your son makes more money than he'll ever need. So you don't have to save money for him. So why don't you do something for you? Because she was like 70. She goes, I'm, you know, I'm getting older. What am I going to spend money like this on my eyes for? I go, well, if your one son doesn't need it, you have no need to save it for anybody. I mean, why don't you treat yourself? Why would you work yeah. so hard your whole life?
I mean, I'm just saying, you do whatever you want. I'll, I'll do whatever you want. I'll put, right. I'm just saying, at least you qualify. I got people who want to spend the money they didn't qualify for. It. You know, you got keratoconus or some crazy thing or bad, you know, macular pathology. This, you know, I'm not going to make them spend money if it's not ethical to put it in. So I, I go, you qualify. So, you know, I told him, I told her the story about my brother. She goes, you know, I think I'm going to do it. <laughs> I said, but don't don't get mad at me. I just say if you can, you know, remotely do it, you should consider it if you really want it. So right. just means I gotta wear like glasses even to see the phone all the time afterwards. Yeah, all the time if you don't do it. Right. I, I mean, I I I said I can't promise no glasses at all. If you get anything, God bless you. It's that's just like a miracle, but I cannot promise anything with what right. the option insurance pays for. They only pay to remove the cataract and put a, a monofocal non-premium lens in your eye to see better but they didn't ever say anywhere to get rid of glasses right so that's, that makes sense. That's, that's a good way to put it i always tell patients too you know you're gonna this is gonna affect the way you see the world every waking moment for the rest of your life yeah that's a good i should i should say something like that for yeah because that's for the rest of your life like every waking moment from the minute you wake up in the morning till you close your eyes when you go to bed at night you're going to see through the surgery. It's not going to change. You're going to wake up. It's going to be the same every day. It's going to be like, what's that movie? Crown Dog Day. Day. That's how your eyes are going to be. So maybe you should do them. Maybe that's what I'll use. You don't want to be like Groundhog Day with your eyes. <laughs> yeah. That might be the new, new, new marketing strategy. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, it's interesting how you talk about your brother. I had a very kind of similar situation with my my dad passed away recently. He gave me some advice and he said his biggest regret in his entire life was that he worked way too hard in his 50s and 60s. And he says, for what? So that now when he's 80 something, his bank account has a little extra or different digit. Who cares? Yeah, he's not young enough to do anything where he wants to do now. That's a thing. Right. So he said his best advice to me was, this, do not waste your 50s and 60s. Don't work your fingers to the bone. Enjoy your life. Now he says, best decades of your life. Your kids are grown up. They're out of the house. They're doing their own right. thing. You've got the freedom. You've got your health. You've got your strength. He says, you can't travel the world when you're 85. You can definitely do it when you're 55. You know, I'm 60. So I just said, this is my year. I'm just going to do, despite every, all this, whatever challenges come my way, I'm still doing this no matter what. And I'm, I'm doing the longest vacation I've taken. Other than my back surgery, <laughs> not really a vacation. vacation. That was not a vacation, by the way. Other than that, and I even came back earlier than they wanted me to on that um, to keep the practice going. But my longest vacation I ever took in 34 years—that was a real vacation—was 12 days. That's pathetic. Oh. So next summer, hashtag I did. I'm doing a five weeker. Nice. I'm doing my stuff now. I'm doing what your dad said. I'm doing what my brother said. So I'm getting my music out. Maybe I'll get lucky. I'm going to go to all the. I've been to Ibiza for Croatia, then back to Ibiza, to Belgium, to Tomorrowland, to Mykonos, and then to Santorini to recover. And I'm going to hopefully get a couple day pool gigs in some of those places with some music to experience that. You, you know, I DJed once in Italy and I DJed in Turks and Caicos um so there's really fun every time i go back to turks and caicos that's my favorite place for vacation it's always a good. oh you gotta go it's I, and i'll tell you i have all the restaurants everywhere to stay i know everything everybody knows me there like the captain of the boat i get he goes ah it's dj mj's back what music list you got for us on the boat today i got, <laughs> I got a new set for you i mean i just love turks and caicos and I, every time i go back to the one club the security you hear him in the ear DJ MJ is here. DJ MJ is here. And I come in and the DJs go, DJ MJ is in the house, everybody. DJ MJ is in the house. They just like, it's so, they make it so exciting to just be there. I mean, it's just everything about, I go there for vacation. It's always just a week because I go Saturday to Saturday because United at least has a nonstop that, that way. And I'm there. Do that place. If you and you land, compared to like Mexico, you know, you have to go through all the immigration stuff yeah, in right. Turks and Caicos. The door opens. Even the guy in the airport remembered me. I'm like the first one off the plane. I'm row one. He goes, DJ MJ's back. And they hug me. Dude, wow. they go, welcome back. They love when people come back. 
And he goes, well, get your bag out right away. Well, you always do when you didn't know me. So I go, you buy fast track and you do fast track for immigration. The bag is already there. Then you go out. I have a driver I use there. He's sitting there waiting. 15 minute drive to the Ritz where I like to stay on the water. I'm literally from the door opening the plane sitting on the beach in less than an hour. Wow. You can't wow. go anywhere in the world and say that. No, yeah, yeah, no way. Mexico, forget the old days gone. You're like four hour lines, you get through this and that. I mean, no as way. great as it is, it's like nowhere. I get there, I have like a whole extra half day vacation because you're right on. The, I mean, I just, I go, just bring my bags up, change it in my suit, I'm going right to the bar and out to the pool or the beach. I'm sitting there at one o'clock, flight lands like 11 30, 12. I'm out there at one o'clock. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. It's a cool place. Really, a lot of good restaurants. The people are great, um, and it just—I don't know—they got everything there. So it's that's my haven. I once, my first time I went a few years ago, the girl I was dating, I was really quiet, and the captain goes, "Is he okay?" Like this, she says she thought I had like a mini stroke or something. She says, "MJ, what's up?" Like they're freaked out. They get the boat in fast. I don't know if something, something's wrong. Everybody relax. It's the first time in my life. Nothing's running through my brain. I'm trying yeah. to enjoy the moment because I've never been to this state in my life oh. where I didn't even hear, I didn't feel or hear anything except the water. Dude, it was like nowhere has ever done that. So I said, I'm always coming back here for vacation. It's the only place that's ever done that for me. So you must go every year. I go, I try and go three times a year, but this year is be just once. I'm going hopefully over Thanksgiving week because uh, usually I don't see my boys till the Christmas time. They surprised me a few weeks ago. They were all in town, took the train down. Even though they were in town, they came down to see my new condo. Nice. They go, they go, we're five minutes out. We gave you notice. They know me. I go, nobody's here. Well, we learn. We got to give you notice always just in case. We'll <laughs> never just show up and not warn our dad. <laughs> They're well, it sounds like you live in your best life here. I think, obviously, with the amount of pleasure you get from doing this, I can see you doing maybe a little bit of, Half day a week off the Malji in Vegas somewhere, living there, DJing yeah, full time. You know. Cake was every other month. Do something like that. Yeah, it'll be fun. You know. So what's your what's your plan for transition then for your practice? Because you you have a beautiful practice that you built up from nothing for thirty plus years. I mean, I almost did a PE deal right before, a couple like a year and a half ago, but there was some things we discovered. The numbers got messed up, and I just pulled the plug but I have a broker. So that's probably the easiest way to do something unless my son really wants to go become an eye person, but I don't know yet. He, he doesn't even know if he wants to go to med school yet. So we'll know by in a year. I mean, I'm not I'll still be going for a few, a few years, but I don't know if PE deals are really something happening, but I would just do a three year deal, probably not a five year. I need to take a little less and just do my three years and at the same schedule, I'm not changing anything. I will not be a, you know, a uh, workaholic for them. I'll just do my same schedule and take whatever money I make and have my exit strategy and migrate to Nevada, hopefully by age 64, 65. So, and uh, I mean, that's that's the probably the easiest route if things are still decent to do that. You never know after this election, things might be better by next year. If I did anything, it'd be by the end of next year, I'll have, well, you know, even on all those things, much in a better position to do a deal finally again. Oh, yeah, recovering from from the COVID stuff. Yeah, and just had a lot of things happen this last year, which I'm more unfortunate, but I'll be through all that and build it back up next year to where I can do a deal again. Yeah, that's kind of all of us, though. You know, when we look back at our career in the last 20, 30 years, it's like it's all ups and downs. Always. Peaks and valleys, dude. There are peaks and valleys. You have to reinvent yourself. You know, I got fairly known in the LASIK world because I got my name. Yeah, and I'm, you know, I, I, I'm a little strip mall in Lake Villa, Illinois. Where is that? Like the northern suburbs? One hour north of Chicago. Yeah, a small little hood. So probably close go. to Wisconsin border. Yeah, it's near Wisconsin border. And, and I had to start from scratch. It's zero patience. And right. I've done so much. It's crazy. And little things change my life. Just moments that things change. And so now um, 
hopefully I'll have that next moment where I can kind of change to the next thing. How do you keep faith during the tough times when, when personal or practice or whatever issues are going on, how do you stay strong? Well, now with everything going on is I have a mission right now because of my brother. Right. So it drives me. So I said, I got to just make it to the next step. So that's what's driving me. You know, the hashtag I did is the driving force right now. Yeah, I always see you with the, the, the bracelet around your arm. Yeah, with the I'll be handing out. Everybody will get a bracelet that night. I ordered like 2,500 of them. Um, I'm seeing if I can get some merch uh two i'm at least gonna get the bottle service girls who wear the hashtag i did shirts hopefully so nice. trying to get you know trying to get some things done either way that night's gonna have a lot of surprises so i'm, I'm gonna say the word drone that's tomorrow's thing i'm working on for that night <laughs> drone. you're just gonna say the word drone <laughs> the drone pilot of mine she goes you really want to do this mj I'm like he goes that's the sickest thing I've ever. That's gonna be sick, bro. That's gonna be so insane. Oh, drone camera over the audience and. Well, I don't know about indoor. I'd love to have that. Indoor is tough. Get nervous with indoor, but right. we're doing an outdoor thing. Leading up to that, it's gonna be kind of cool. So that's in my M8 competition, the Batmobile. We're gonna do something really cool. My place, say DJ MJ. It's gonna be cool. <laughs> right, man. I hope so you. Can Dude, October 19th is going to be a fun night. And everybody who misses it, I'm going to say four letters. F-O-M-O. -O. Fear of missing out. Yeah. If you miss that night in this city, there's two clubs that are closing that night in my honor. Whoa. And there are, everybody's coming. Because that club, I won't say the name, but I was there on a Sunday three years ago. They were trying to do a Sunday football brunch thing. And I went in and What's up with this? We're going to make a movie today. Who's ready to make a movie and rejuvenate this place? They go, I'm getting in the DJ booth right now. Let's make a movie. So they call us, they're calling friends and stuff. Dude, that thing went till two in the morning, started at 10 in the morning. They made, we made a movie. That club not only got rejuvenated, revived, it kept them from closing, and then they opened a second club. Wow. And they go, We are definitely closing in honor of DJ MJ on his big night. Because we would not even be here without him. Wow, that's respect. That's cool. So we're all coming, bro. It sounds like an amazing. Well, we'll certainly link it down below here. And again, yeah, this podcast is going to air about a week or two before that yeah. event. I know my guy's on his way. He'll be here soon. So I got to create two more versions of the song, bro. <laughs> I'm not done yet. I'm getting close. When we record it, she flies in, records it. I'll be. I'll finally be at ease. <laughs> Once I know it's recorded, but the first version, I played a couple things for the voice overlay with her voice, but it's not the lyrics to a couple of just random Uber drivers, like people who don't know me. I want to completely non-biased. Right. They go, really? What night is that? That song's really good. I love when they say that. I'm like, ah, non-biased people. That means it's going to be all right. <laughs> well, I, I got to definitely test it on people. I have no it. idea who the hell I am. I go, you like this song? I don't even tell him until after. He goes, that's a great song. Who did that song? I go, I did. He goes, whoa, that's good, my man. I go, I want to come. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll be there to support you for sure. Now, I got to ask you one last thing. You're wearing this baseball cap that says ATX. Oh. Is that Austin? So I, yeah, it's Austin, Texas. So I wear all these are G4 hats. So G4 are my favorite hats, the way they fit. I'm going to try and get a G4. I called them. I have to send that's the only thing I have to do this weekend. I'm trying to get one with I did on it. See if they'll do a custom one for me because it's all golf courses. The G4. So I have like ballin' Mark uh, Milliner's course. It's called ballin'. I wear that a lot. So it looks like saying, says like I'm ballin', like baller. So I wear that a lot. I have one that says P-Boy for Piner, so it looks like it says Playboy. I have another one that says uh, Bandon for Bandon Dunes. <laughs> People say things, let's go Brandon. No, it says Bandon, guys. It doesn't say Brandon. And then I have M Club for my club, Merit Club. You go, what's the M Club? I love it. And then one guy last night, nobody knew what it was. This guy was from Austin. I go, dude, you're my friend. You're Austin. I go, I knew what that stood for. So I love all the G4 golf hats because now I'm trying to get one for I did if they'll do one for me. 
That's you I got to have some merch in your event. Yeah. Get some merch. I'll buy a, I'll buy a hat. I'm, try, I'm trying. I don't know if I can do it in a month. I'm trying. I'm going to try and get hats and some shirts. I'm working on it. I don't know if I can pull it off in time. I'm trying. Oh, you can pull off anything. Yeah, I got the bracelets at least. I got something. And my bracelets do have my Instagram on it. Smart. It has my mm-hmm. hashtag I did on the Instagram on the other side. So get some followers on that. So well, I'll, 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 I'll link your Insta down below too, for sure. Tell yeah. me the link and put it all in there. Yeah, I'll send it to you on the email. And I'll have the flyer. I'll email you the flyer. I think it's coming out next week. I talked to the managing partners yesterday, and they said that I think Sophie Tucker's agent signing the contract today or tomorrow, so the flyer can be released next week. It's fantastic. Well, I oh. wish you the best with this. It sounds like an amazing night. I'm definitely going to be there. Yeah. Let me finish up with one simple thing, yeah. which is, a lot of our listeners here skew on the younger side, off the most in the 30s and 40s. You've had an amazing career, incredibly successful, a lot of challenges which you've overcome too. What pearls can you give them? What advice do you have? Young off the mall, just mid-30s, starting off, doesn't know where this is going. Find something that you want to excel at in your field. So for me, it was refractive. I took advantage of that i took a chance mm-hmm. and then i jumped into premium iols then i jumped into the laser scleral stuff and then i jumped into now i'm working on with cornea gen you know the ctac procedure to build the cornea back up to help get corneas back to normal shape uh there's come other companies like Altec stuff all doing the same thing so that's kind of the next just find something and make it your thing and get known for that one thing and excel at it you'll get referrals yeah. and in the end just give a shit i told you what's your secret my last gig in chicago was um for the managing partner john poda another key person um travis maciel was the foundation room guy my collaborator mentor is shinar Yunin. i operate on his dad and gave him premium lenses and uh he's changed my life as a dj and then John Poda was a guy who reinvented my DJ career three years ago. He got me going again. He said, you're not done yet. You're headlining tonight. And a lot of the I people, you know, came that night to support yeah. me. And it got it opened the doors. And this multi-billionaire two weeks ago when I DJed, I headlined Saturday night. And everybody goes, it was snapping, dude, that night. You've come a long way. And this multi-billionaire said, no, nah, I don't know. And I didn't know he was a multi-billionaire. And he came in, he goes up to me after my set. He goes, what's your secret? I didn't know who he was. He's like one of the top 50 richest guys in the world, I guess. He goes, what's your secret? I go, when you walked in, the whole room changed. Like, you ain't DJing yet. The room mm-hmm. changed. Like, it changed. I'm like, I don't know. That's your energy. I just said, yeah. I said, I give a shit. That's what I told him. So just give a shit. And work hard and you know, be true to what you're doing and you get respect for it and love what you're doing. And he said it was way more than obvious than that. And the trick was for me, I guess what I do is when I played at Zook even, you know, they have like 200 employees. I made sure I congratulated and thanked every employee, bartender, bus boy, bottle service girl, security, management, I don't care who it was, whoever's working in that place. I thanked them for giving me the opportunity that night to be their DJ. Wow. And a lot of people don't. And so when you come back, it changes. They remember you. That's my little trick. So I, I bless them all and say thanks. You gave me an opportunity. I hope I delivered tonight. And the bus boys hug me when they see me like everybody does. They go, MJ's back. It's going to be a great night. See, the energy and vibe changes. And everybody's oh, like, yeah. even the people working there are like, because if they're into it, you know it's going to be a better night. For sure. For sure, for sure. That's it. That's great advice. So super specialize in something that you love. And then give care a, shit about a it. lot. Yeah, care yeah. a lot. Care yeah, a lot. Sure. I say it that way because it's just kind of like must. I know this is podcast. I tell it like it is. Just like our one conference. Just tell it like it is. I'm just, just you know, I, I mean, I really do. I mean, look yeah. at me. I'm like, I could just be sitting out on the sun on the deck today. It's a beautiful day. Nope, I'll be four hours working on my two versions more of my song. We're knocking it out because I need to 
get to the finish line. Fantastic. There'll be enough days to sit in Turks and Caicos in the sun on the deck. Oh, so I'm going to have to join you one day doing that. You got to come down to you. I mean, I know all the restaurants. I even know certain waiters and people at each restaurant who you should ask for. Wow. It's cool. I don't want to go. I don't want your recommendations. I want to go with you. You come with me. That's you got to do it. We got to do a trip together down there. It's fun. We got to put on a little eye meeting down there. A little cataract coach meeting. We should. I tried to get Caribbean. I didn't do it at that Ritz, but it was too small. They went oh. to look at the venue. It's just, just a hair small. They only have one ball and they need like two like for the administrators. It was just like, it's the perfect venue for that meeting. Just a hair small. Like, guys, just take a hit. Just do a little smaller for once. It's just a perfect venue for it. It's so easy to get to, and it's the Caribbean. I mean, I might try and convince them. They're, yeah, they're, they're, set, they're, on, they're set on their places, though. I tried. They're just saying it's a little small. I don't think it's – I think they can get away with it if they're creative. But it is. It's my haven. I go at least twice a year. I'm only going to hit once this year, but I might go – I'm going to go again probably um, springtime. I usually go like spring, August, and Thanksgiving. I try and do a week, three times a year just to break up, you know, just to give myself a little break because that's where I get a break. Meetings, I don't get a break. That's not vacation. You know, I get a day off. Yeah, of not course. a vacation. But as a California guy living in Chicago at the, at the Wisconsin border, I figure you'd go like January, December, yeah, February. I mean, well, I have, a, I have Hawaiian Eye in January, so I'm already right. going somewhere for – nine days so whatever it is so i'm already escaping then and then caribbean eye is like five days in february so i usually go like march april when i'm kind of done go for a week and then i'm like all right i broke up winter just enough to get through and then i go august again because august the rates are half price for the same place right and it stays light out longer so it's like really nice down there i like the heat i'm a high guy i'm the guy who likes hot that's why i don't yeah. mind going to nevada i i like i like heat I hate yeah. cold in winter. I like heat. So I don't mind. It's like 90 out by the water. I mean, I love heat. So that's Fantastic. that's my style. Some people like cold weather. So I'm doing less. I ski patrol for 17 years. I just don't do it anymore. After I had my back surgery, it's weird. I get like a Renaud thing sometime in my fingers if it's really mm. cold. So I just don't. The skiing, I, I mean, I was a great skier, but I just don't do it anymore because I, don't, I like to protect my hands now. I don't want to put any risk. So... Especially the last five years, got to make it to the end line. The I got it. I got to make it to the end line, and then then I can maybe go do something, you know. Well, then you need your hands for DJ too, buddy. Yeah, I need my hands for DJ. I always joke, you know, all the girls are in, you know, all the girls always want to come in the DJ booth. It's funny, and I taught all my DJs Chicago this trick. They all want to reach up, like one girl's drunk and hit something once. Yeah. What the hell just happened? I'm no music. It's like the lens dropping. Yeah. When you go, wow, you don't say shit. You tell the patient, wow, the Red Sea just parted. Yeah. And, and then I go, wow, what just happened? And then I go, you're out of the booth. So now I tell girls, they come to the DJ, booth, keep, you can touch stuff. Just the hands have to stay below the waist if you're in the DJ booth. <laughs> well, all the DJ Chicago use that. Hand. No hands above the waist in my area. So you can't touch anything. So that's, oh, that's, too funny. that's the DJ code now. Hands below the waist if you're in the DJ booth. <laughs> you're too funny. Well, I want to thank you. Get him to the podcast. I'm going to have links down below for all our listeners. All right. We're definitely going to see you on Saturday, October 19th. A lot of people going to the Academy. This is going to be the hot ticket, the hot party for the Academy. It's Sign late up now. night, so if you're really forever young, we'll find out if you're a FOMO or not person that night. You do not want to miss it. I don't care how old you are. You can stay up late one night in your life because it'll be one moment. As that song Summer 91 says, you have one moment, one memory. And right. that, you don't get it back. I don't care what video footage I have and stuff. It's not the same as experience it live. Right. So, all right. Thanks. You're the best, Uday, man. Thanks for having me on this podcast. What a fantastic conversation. Thank you again, Mitch. And I want to remind you guys and gals, we got a new podcast every single week. We are the top podcast in all of ophthalmology. Plus, every day we have a new cataractcoach.com video. You know where to find it. So we will catch you next time.